So WebRTC from start to finish, ish. <laughs> you know, it's um, certainly not a full, full blown. Here's a complete solution, and tomorrow you just start using WebRTC in your application. But um, I did get to a point where I learned a few things, and I just want to share them with you. Big warning sign is. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't know everything, but um, I started on this journey uh, because I really wanted to advance and try to contribute a little bit to our wonderful ecosystem. I'm sure this is shocking every, to everyone. Like, what's this guy doing up here? I've asked myself that same question. <laughs> so, um, you know, last year there was another great talk. Um, on WebRTC and Elixir and Janus, uh, and I liked it. Uh, and at previous job I was working in, we were doing WebRTC, and we were looking at some other telephony implementations. Um, so, you know, I looked through the talk and and the repo, and um, it certainly has like the functionality. And obviously, the demo last year was great and uh, inspiring, but. Um, it, there were some gaps. Um, I didn't know how the Phoenix channels worked. I didn't know how to set up the JavaScript client-side implementation. Uh, and then it had like gen event, you know, that was deprecated. And so I was like, well, I'm just gonna try to explore this with my last job. And uh, you know, eventually a, a friend of mine, I was telling a friend of mine. Uh, Say like, hey, uh, yeah, I'm working on this. He's like, oh, you should submit a talk. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, I did, and uh, got accepted. Uh, so what's Janus? Uh, Janus is a multi-purpose Swiss Army knife, uh, WebRTC gateway, and then some. Uh, it's been around for a number of years. Uh, there's a great deal of documentation, uh, a good community. They even have their own conference. So uh, I've certainly been a fan of it, and I've kind of played around with it uh, in years past, but never to this extent. Um, so you can go to their website and read more about it. But at its core, it's really a pretty simple implementation. So the Extendability is these plugins. Um, Echo test is pretty fun. That's pretty easy to, to play with. And it's basically just c testing connectivity. And so you can use these various plugins to add on to Janus. You can write your own plugins. Um, it's really got a lot going on. Uh, and the one I'm going to be focusing on is the Video Room plugin, uh, which people are pretty you know, understanding about what Video Room is. You've got Room. People join it, video, fun. So there is, there is a demo. There is like, hey, here is like HTML, JavaScript, Janus. You get the server running, you load the web page, and then you get a video room. Um, and that's, it's, it's really got batteries included. Uh, the demo has what you need. Um, the problem there is, oh, the problem there is that it's really well defined for that demo. It's not like here, uh, here are all the little hooks and areas you want to use to to build upon to integrate your application. Um, it's it's a robust demo. It accounts for older versions. It accounts for edge cases, um, but it's 
it's a lot. So here's like the default video room. Um, I thought you guys would like my, my graphic here. Um, I was gonna go with squares, but I thought I'd have some fun with it. So there's a guy canoeing, and he's a browser, canoeing with his browser. And it's the sim over simple graphic is JS, WebSockets, or also has long polling. Um, sends an offer, trickle candidates. Janus is a mule because it's a workhorse, uh, it, or work mule. And uh, then, you know, communicates back to the other candidate, the other peer, and uh, sends an answer. That's a very, very, very simple diagram. And then, by default, it just uses stun. Uh, so that's basically peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, and you can use turn and media relay, but that's kind of the default uh, setup. So <clears throat> this is kind of where uh, I ended up, with basically Elixir Phoenix in the middle, and you have Phoenix channels as the transport layer, uh, not just WebSockets, but you have you know, the channel is the room uh, for the client. Uh, and in this case, there's also a server-side WebSocket going from Elixir Phoenix to Janus. So uh, there's a middleman, but for good reason, using a middleman, we get to reduce that big old nasty JavaScript uh, implementation. So it means more Elixir code, less JavaScript. And then my demo has, if it even works, I don't know if I'll be able to get Wi-Fi. Uh, my demo has a force media relay for turn. So instead of peer-to-peer, -peer, which, you know, in theory, everyone was like, oh, peer-to-peer, -peer, that's great. Well, you know, you add four or five people going peer-to-peer, -peer, that's a lot of media going in and out of your machine. So it's not, like, terribly practical for a video room. So I just went ahead and just did force media relay uh, via turn with a unicorn, because it's magical. Um, terminology. So I'm going to try to blow through this, because uh, you know we're on limited time frame. And uh, hopefully, I'll have uh, some time to, to step through the code a little bit. Um, terminology, real-time communications. Uh, it's spec and a project. Uh, it's implemented by browsers, but there's, of course, like we know on the client side, a lot of variations in the exact implementation. And so there's, there's utilities to help with that, but it's, uh, you know, it still takes a good deal of effort to get through. Uh, ICE, um, that's basically the protocol for establishing and sending candidates. Um, and the browsers implement that pretty well. Uh, and then, of course, like the way to implement ICE is either stun or turn. And that sets up the mechanism for sending offers and answers. So stun, turn. Uh, stun, you know, is you can get like a free stun server, no problem. Turn, you got to pay for. Um, but there's resources on that to just spin up a service and integrate that into your app. And um, SDP is kind of the generic term for describing where I'm at, where I can be reached when I'm sending an offer or an answer. Again, simplification. Um, Janus 101. So at the heart of it, the first thing you got to do is create a session. So a session, like a lot of us understand, uh, on like a web app, applies as well to Janus. It needs to know who you are. Um, it needs to know, are you still active? And if you're not active, it cleans up after you. Plugin. Uh, so plugin is like that functionality we talked about. Video room, streaming, that sort of thing. You can, it's the core functionality module in Janus. So you can add and mix and match plugins to augment the, react, the uh, functionality of Janus. And when you attach a plugin, you get 
a handle. So uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a weird uh, naming for me, just to kind of get my head around and then also write the code around it. So I also sometimes use handler in the code. So handle handler, same sort of thing. Um, so a session has one or more handles attached to it. Um, and by attaching a handle, you then can at associate a peer connection, video audio stream, with that handle. So I pretty much focused on the video room, and you know, some of this might vary with other plugins, but uh, this is the generic understanding. So peer connection, handle. And in that case, if you have, you're publishing one stream, that's one peer connection, uh, and a handle. And then you have, say, two other streams coming in from peers. That's two more handles, two more streams, two peer connections. And of, of course, apparently there's, this, uh, there's some changes afoot in terms of how this is all implemented. So like, in a few months, this might be sort of irrelevant to some extent, or, or modified a little bit. But that's the, that's the reality as of right now. <laughs> so some resources. Um, there's a lot of, in particular, like understanding the admin panel. There's a lot of great tools for Janus. That one is uh, pretty amazing. And it's a really good blog post. Um, RTC peer connection, that's kind of the core of WebRTC. Adapter.js, uh, it's pretty much essential. Uh, you know, it's a polyfill to normalize the implementation and make it a little easier to implement WebRTC. <laughs> Still um, kind of tricky. Um, Phoenix Channels, that was an, a neat little blog post that really just explored like what the Phoenix payload looks like. Because when I was trying to figure out, well, how do I get Janus and Phoenix Channels and does, does are these things compatible? Um, and then untangling the WebRTC workflow, that had a really good diagram, much better than the unicorn and canoe paddler scuba diver diagrams I had. Um, Xerces on demand, you can, you can sign up free, um, and you can get your turn server, stun server set up, and you can have like a basic developer account. It's great. <coughs> and then, of course, um, in terms of like understanding uh, the client side, mini Janus is this fun little uh, Mozilla project. So it basically takes like the standard uh, Janus JavaScript and from that demo and boils it down <laughs> dramatically. Um, I couldn't quite use it exactly, but you can actually read it in a few hundred lines. I think it's like 200, 300. So um, I highly recommend that. It's like you can grok it and, yeah. So uh, what could go wrong? Um, <laughs> everything pretty much went wrong. Um, you know, I, I kind of started this at, at my last job, and um, yeah, it just keeps getting better and better as you watch it. So I started this at, at my, my last job, and Things changed, I moved to another job, and so there was a lot uh, going on on that front, because I thought I was gonna be working on this a little more full-time, so I had to kind of work it in in between things. Um, configuration. Um, configuration with Janus, um, messing up on uh, trickling ice candidates. <laughs> um, it's kind of bad when Janus goes haywire when you start sending candidates the wrong way. <laughs> Um, Docker, uh, yeah, yeah, Docker, Docker was a problem, but I think I fixed that, so, um, but there was a period of time where I was freaking out, because I was like, this isn't working, and I don't know why, it was like three days of me just spinning my wheels, um, so Janus has, like, a lot of great documentation, it, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to speak badly about anyone or anything, it's, so it's not that. It's, there's a lot. But then there's things like, I don't know how to create a video room on demand. Like, there's various samples, but something kind of core where it's like, 
how do you send a web request to, you know, create one on demand? <laughs> and I eventually found, a, 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 you know, on the forums, a little message on there saying, like, someone described it. I was like, oh, that's great. And then I implement it. So I got it in the code, but then I, I thought I bookmarked it and I lost it. So I don't, and I tried to find it again. <laughs> I was going to include it on the links. So I was like, I don't, I don't know what the hell happened to it. So um, <laughs> another really bad mistake I made, because, you know, the asynchronous nature of WebSockets, um, I was starting to build out the session and attaching a plugin. And I was trying to do this WebSockets initially. And I was like, oh, this is kind of awkward. I was like, oh, I know. I'll mix and match. Because I want to create a session. I expect a response back. I'll just use the, they call it REST. It's not quite a REST API. Um, but REST, I was like, all right, well, I'll create a session, get the response back. All right, great. And then I'll attach a plugin. I'll get that back. That's great. And then I was like, oh, well, then I'll just use WebSockets for the rest of the stuff. And then I'll just subscribe to events, and everything will be great. Well, no, you don't do that. <laughs> Uh, I learned that won't work. <laughs> you won't get any events. Because Janice thinks, oh, well, you create this session via HTTP, uh, and you know, you're going to long pull from here on out. And there's like a one-liner. And, and if you don't read carefully, yeah, it won't work. <laughs> uh, so eventually, I corrected that. And uh, deployments, mixed release, which actually is part of, part of my problem with the demo, probably. <laughs> I did get it set up, but uh, I think I messed up on the asset building. Oh, well. Um, Phoenix channels. So Phoenix channels are great, but what I messed up on is I was trying to think, OK, this, this channel is like a controller. It's my boundary. And I'll have a gen server send a message to the channel, and then the channel will send it back down the client. And it ended up just being ridiculous, <laughs> um, just use endpoint broadcast uh, from within the gen server, and it makes code easier, cleaner, more reliable. Uh, and I think that those are, you know, uh, in particular, the Phoenix channel thing is something that could apply to um, other implementations if you have other projects that are using WebSockets on the back end. Um, it, it's great for input, but if you have another process some, somewhere, is there a question? Use the mic. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, it's fine. Try it again. Uh, as far as Phoenix channels, is that one of the ways that you were able to mitigate some of the ice trickle uh, from your configuration? Oh, yeah. You know what the ice trickle was, the problem was? Is I wasn't associating the trickle to a handle. And it was all like all the trickles were going to one handle. Oh, OK. Which was bad. Right. Um, and that was just like programming error. Um, but yes, I mean, Phoenix Channels does their job great. It's no problem there. It's the implementation <laughs> decision <laughs> here. Um, another thing, I actually, I reverted <laughs> like at the airport yesterday was, so you get, uh, I'll eventually, I think, get to the payloads and things like that. But basically, you can get kind of a cryptic response back that doesn't say, like, explicitly, you, you cre here's a session's created. It's like, no, it's like you got to look at the data and go, oh, I think this is a session. <laughs> got created. Uh, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll have a module that will just be one layer, and then we'll transform that into like a tuple term and make it all pretty. But then it just added like a whole other layer to things. And I was like, oh, this is ridiculous. And it added more indirection in the code. And instead, I just passed the payload on to uh, the gen server and let the gen server figure it out. Because um, you think you're being, at least I thought I was being clever, <laughs> and it ended up just being more messy and unnecessary. Um, and I, I think I touched on this earlier. So like the video room demo has like, the Janus core library has 3,000 plus lines of JavaScript. And that's what I was using to figure out how does WebRTC work? Because I was like, well, they got it figured out somehow. Um, and it, it just, it's batteries included. It has everything in there. And that's not even the video room implementation. That's just the core library. Um, so I didn't really use anything explicitly with Janus in my JavaScript. Uh, I just went with it. Um, 
I used uh, you know modern uh, JavaScript, so avoided callbacks, um, and I did like async await, and so it made made things a lot tidier. Um, and for reference, there was a period of time for like several years where I didn't even write any JavaScript. Before this, I I hadn't written any JavaScript in like several years, <laughs> so um, that was a challenge for me to read and try to understand what's going on with 3,000 lines of JavaScript. Um, and then there's a number of resources out there, but they're, they're, a lot of them are outdated. You know, WebRTC moves fast. <laughs> it changes you know, pretty quick uh, in relation to a lot of technology. So uh, JNS was a great, the, the JavaScript was a great reference, but you still had to kind of chug through a lot of code. And then it's just like debugging all the WebRTC internals. So I got the project done-ish. Um, I got the repo. I will open source it. I just don't have like the readme together, and I want it to be so that you pull it down, start it up, and everything's happy. Um, so that's the link. I will open source it once I get the readme together and just clean it up a little bit. Besides, you got the rest of the conference. You, should, you don't need to be messing around with some WebRTC right now. Uh, I, and I was required by my employer to <laughs> include this. Um, yeah, Phoenix Frenzy, do it. Um, it's really awesome. You do Phoenix Frenzy, you submit it. There's a showcase, and uh, it's for bragging rights. Uh, so the demo, I don't know if this is even going to work because, let's see here. I'm having to tether to my phone because I literally, it will not connect to Elixir Conf. I don't know. I'm just a lucky guy, I guess. That and I managed to like break it somehow, I think last night, maybe. Okay, let's see here. Oh, there's me. Um, I do have a plant in the audience to see if, if the Plant, my buddy. <laughs> oh, there he is. Yay. So, um, yeah. I don't know what happened. That might be, that might be my, I'm, you know, tethering off my phone, so that might be my peer connection. Yeah. Well, it worked. Um, I did have, like, a little chat room thing, too, but I think I, I managed to break it, I think, on the asset deploy. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with WebRTC, but it just, uh, to demonstrate the kind of, Here's a standard little Phoenix chat. Yeah, I think, I think my connection is just bad. Um, but anyways, yeah, I know. Amazing, right? Whatever you see. Um, thank you. Um, and, and so, OK, I'm like almost done. I'm, I, it looks weird. It like looks like I'm done, but I'm not done. Um, so what I, my plan was, my genius plan was to get through all that um, and then try to like step through the code and uh, hopefully, um, you know, share some, some of the things I learned. So thank you all. So I'm not done, but I'm still thanking you all. <laughs> um, and my friends and coworkers that cheered me on um, and my wife in particular. Uh, so... Here's the start, uh, this video call JS, this kind of set up the socket. Um, so you can, uh, th the other reason too is that you have Elixir in the middle, you can, you can lock down authentication. You know, if you use the standard Janus implementation, it's kind of exposed. Um, th there are authentication mechanisms, but it's, you know, there is no server in between. So we can still do token authentication, um, you know, through, Phoenix, and since Janus is not exposed directly, you can, you can better control that experience. Um, so <clears throat> this was another thing, uh, in particular the topic. Uh, I had a hard time getting my head around. So this is a channel of one, a channel for just one user, which normally you think you have a channel, you have a bunch of people, but 
um, because Janus is doing its video room logic, um, you really just want messages just to go to this one user, and in particular, their one browser tab. So I made a random reference so that if they opened up multiple browser tabs, it wouldn't crash. And in theory, you wouldn't, I mean, in reality, you wouldn't want to do this, but you could publish multiple streams to the same room, which I don't know why you would other than like testing purposes, but it was a good example of um, how to, I think, use a Phoenix channel in a slightly different fashion. Join event, um, standard Phoenix channel, nothing special there. Um, so in the uh, join call on the Phoenix channel, you have a, there's really not a whole lot going on, but this is where you can also validate that the user is correct and you, know, you can always bounce them out of the channel. Uh, so you have that control again of the connection of the call process. And then a little thing I have at the end, and um, I think a lot, of, a lot of people know this, but some may not, a uh, handy little thing is like after join, you send a message to yourself, you wanna do something asynchronously after joining the room, uh, it's where you can just send a, a message to yourself, and uh, it's super handy. So here's the after join to set up the call um, for a session. So I, I have a, you know, as I had in that awesome diagram, where there is a back-end um, WebSocket process. And we use that process to create a session, but it's not, um, it's basically just a module here, a session service, just a module, uh, and asynchronously going to create um, a session. Um, one thing I think I skipped on this slide is basically, uh, at this time, we don't have any gen servers spun up, so the response actually comes back to the Phoenix channel initially. So here's, I'm gonna hopefully quickly go through the WebSocket client. And um, this is just a, a, another library you can use, uh, easiest implementation for me to use. Uh, thing to note here is tracking transactions. So Janus requires uh, unique transaction IDs for I think almost everything. Um, and basically I'm just using a UID, but um, there's a few events, few core events like creating a session that you expect a response back, right? Um, since it's asynchronous, you need to track who sent it <laughs> so you can get that response back. And so we pass in a PID along with the transaction ID and the WebSocket client uh, holds a little state. And here's a uh, a message struck within the, the module, uh, just kind of showing some of the things. In particular, the caller PID, that's when you, you need to explicitly define uh, where the response goes. And it, not everything requires that. In fact, once you get the core setup going and you have a handle attached, it's pretty straightforward because, you're like, oh, the handle sent this, so we just send it back to the handle. But before that, there is a little bit of a manual wiring up. All right, so uh, this, this, this one in particular was, uh, <laughs> I lost a little time. You have to set a special header, and it's included in the docs, but um, it's not super obvious, and if you don't set this header correctly, you won't be talking to Janus. And so this is the sending of the actual message. Um, there's a few things in particular here, and this is continued. We don't, like by default, I, I just explicitly don't track keep alive uh, messages because a session needs to do a keep alive. Um, so you just like, there's no, no reason to track those transactions or the acts. Oh, and there's, there's also a way to explicitly not track a call, a transaction. Um, so this is the response back. This is in the website client it gets a response back from Janus, and uh, it starts to figure out what to do, decodes the data, um, it looks for ACK, and it just ignores ACK in particular, because there's a lot of ACKs. Uh, and I just didn't find any need to incorporate those. Good to know, but 
didn't have any use for them. Uh, so this is uh, where we're tracking transactions is a map, and you can pop off the transaction. And if it's there, it will look for the PID and uh, dispatch it and dispatch event. And if not, it uses heuristics to figure out where do I send this. And dispatch event is just a simple, there's multiple function heads to match. But this one's a simple one where we have tracked the caller PID. Uh, you'll see that on that right map. And that's when we've explicitly defined, hey, this is where this response needs to go. Um, and notice we just do a send PID. So that does a, like a handle info uh, on the response. So this is where the, the, since we don't have any gen servers spun up at this point, uh, it made sense to just send it back to the call channel. Um, and once we have the session ID, we can then use a session supervisor, a dynamic supervisor, to spin up a session and start it. Um, and that's why I kind of I wanted to uh, wait to get the session ID from Janus. So then, whenever we got a message that was explicitly defined for the session ID, we just use that session ID to look up the PID and receive the, the message. So because of that, we just, I just use a simple module initially to create the session. But now, we have a gen server. Um, oh, and then this is the other step. Uh, once we have a session, we can then attach a plugin. So these, these are things that were done on the Janus JavaScript Im implementation, but because of the Elixir Phoenix WebSocket goodness, we can move that over into Elixir land. Uh, in, this, in this case, the very core, the very first thing you want to do on a video room is publish your feed. So this is a publisher that's being attached. Um, so uh, stepping back into session, um, I think we have a little bit more time. Um, I'll just finish this and then I guess get questions. Or is it up? Five minutes? OK. All right, real quick. So again, we had the send self. This is a session. Uh, if Janus doesn't get a keep alive, a heartbeat, and I think it's like 50 seconds is the default interval, uh, it kills it. So using OTP and all the goodness, we can use keep alive, and it basically recurses on itself and continually sends a little keep alive message. Um, I figured this is about where we'd end anyways. Uh, so there's more code. Um, you know, uh, I'll eventually open source the repo. Hopefully, uh, you guys will get to play around with it. And uh, I, I, I definitely want to keep playing around with this and uh, hopefully evolving. And, and if anyone else has any needs specifically and wants to uh, engage in some WebRTC Janus, uh, please you know, let me know and uh, obviously pull down the repo and experiment. So uh, questions? After, after your experience, would you still want to work with Janus? Or are there other techs out there that you think might be better? Um, yeah, the only other one, that's a good question. So uh, the only other one I know of is like Currento. I think I'm saying that right. Currento. Um, and it's cool, but it's like Java. And uh, you know, JVM's kind of so-so. Um, but this is a C-based based implementation. It's super lightweight. I mean, it starts up, and by default, it uses like 30, 30 megabytes of RAM. You know, it's super lightweight. And it's got all these, all these awesome telephony plugins. And so that's kind of what attracted me. And, and the reason why I focused on that was we were looking at other telephony uh, implementations, SIP, and things like that. So it's already got a great pedigree in the code base. But yeah, it's good. Anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, just on, yeah. uh, did you run into any problems at scale uh, with Janus, or is it pretty robust? Any, any kind of bottlenecks that, that you came across, just out of curiosity? Uh, well, you know, I, I really didn't get to go live with this or really much past what you just saw. Um, so no, uh, I did not encounter any problems. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but that's a good question. Uh, 
As, as far as I know, I mean, I think it, it, it will still be lightweight. Um, you know, I definitely want to keep working on it. And uh, who knows, maybe next year I'll have this thing. I'll be like, yeah, I can scale this up to 10,000 users. Who knows? But uh, that's a good question. Anyone else? No? Okay. Okay, I think we're done. Thank Yay. you.